Good morning, church. I appreciate that shout out because um, I was going to say our, our numbers are small, but we have plenty of um, sunshine to warm our hearts. Oh my gosh, what a lovely day it is. Um, so I know it is a great mix of Whew, thank goodness I could finally get to church this week because um, the roads are not a complete disaster um, and it's not snowing sideways, so that's good. Um, and it's also a mix of, whew, the weather has changed and so I could go and do something because I feel like I've been locked up in this house forever. Um, so welcome to Trinity this morning um, where no matter who you are, no matter where you come from, um, no matter what your spiritual journey has looked like um, before this moment, you are welcome here. And together, we will take steps um, to move forward and uh, praise um, and worship our God. So today, we're going to continue with the Lenten series of tapping into the power. Um, everybody could use a little bit of um, the power of Jesus in their lives. So we're tapping into that power, um, and today um, we're going to focus our eyes on, I've changed, but nobody sees it. Um, we're going to be able to see some of these things happen today because there are people who help to make it all happen. Um, Allison's going to be accompanying us and um, so that we can make beautiful noises um, when we sing. And um, Dawn's been uh, making sure that uh, things are ready and there's helpers to come forward. And Logan's already been upstairs uh, making sure that the live stream is happening. So welcome to you who may be at home today. Um, and I am super grateful for those of you who are here today. So let us begin our time together. Um, we're going to welcome the light of Christ onto the um, altar. And together we're going to sing, Open My Eyes That I May See. All of our songs today start with open. So we are all about being open. Please stand in body or in spirit. <clears throat> Open my eyes that I may see Glimpses of truth thou hast for me Place in my hands the wonderful key That shall unclasp and set me free Silently now I wait for thee Ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my eyes, illumine me, Spirit divine. Open my ears that I may hear Voices of truth thou sendest clear. And while the wave notes fall on my ear, Everything false will disappear. Silently now I wait for thee, ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my ears, illumine me, spirit divine. Open my mouth and let me bear gladly the warm truth everywhere. Open my heart and let me prepare Love with thy children thus to share Silently now I wait for thee Ready, my God, thy will to see Open my eyes, illumine me Spirit divine You may be seated. And as you're making, um, being seated, I would ask my, um, uh, call, my faith, call the faithfulness helper, oh, it's Chris, to come forward um, so we can share in this work of um, calling us to our job today. When the world is dark and full of hate and fear, when we cannot see God, we, we will, will turn, turn toward, toward the, the light. light. When we cannot find our way back to love and peace, we will we'll turn, turn toward, toward the, the light. light. 
when our vision dims due to the darkness within, we, we will, will turn, turn toward, toward the, the light. Christ opens our eyes with the gift of sight. The, the light, light of, of the, the world, world is Jesus, Jesus the Christ. Christ. Come and worship the one who brings sight to the blind. Praise, Praise God, God, the light, light of, of the, the world. world. Amen. Praises be to God who hears our prayers. What are the prayers of joy or of concern um, that are in your hearts and minds today? And hallelujah, one of my prayers has just been answered. <laughs> David's on um, a call this weekend, and so he's been in fear, uh, helping um, computer things at the hospital happen. And I've, so I've been up here making alternate plans for what I'm going to do <laughs> without him. So praises be to God. But what are your joys and concerns? Yes, Dixie. Oh my gosh, hasn't it been lovely to watch the snow melt? Um, I, I know that there are places um, upriver um, that people are worried about flooding a bit. Um, but it has certainly been nice. And so far, um, the parsonage hasn't, fl the base parsonage basement hasn't flooded, the church basement hasn't flooded, um, so it's been a good, good thing. Excellent, excellent. Any other joys or concerns? Yes, Camille. So safe um, uh, travels for you, um, and uh, thank yous um, for uh, folks who recognize we may have a need and are willing to step in and take care of that need. I know I went home early one day this week to check the window wells at the parsonage um, to make sure that there wasn't any snow and ice built up in them, so it's an important thing. Any other joys or concerns today? Dawn. Chemotherapy is very difficult, I understand, um, and uh, kind of like um, people didn't understand that um, COVID, besides having the profound effects on our lungs, would also um, bring on uh, brain fog and things like that. Sometimes people don't realize that uh, chemo is all-encompassing in our life, so we are glad to have you back with us, and please make sure that you are... Um, uh, caring for yourself and only doing as much. I know we would all love to be there chatting at you and, and demanding um, uh, energy and time, um, so please help us to remember what your comfort levels are going to be, Sherry. Any others? Then, my friends, um, let us take just a moment to be in silence, because sometimes the pr sometimes the prayers aren't ready to have words put to them. And now I would invite you to join with me aloud as we speak the prayer that Jesus taught to the disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Joe, you are going to come and read the Hebrew scripture lesson for us. So 
not everybody would realize this about Jo, but she is a fabulous um, landscaper and gardener. And she actually um, has done some planning and helping us think about long-term for the landscaping here at church. So we're, we're waiting for the snow to be gone so we can uh, continue work on that. So I think it is pretty appropriate that you would be reading the 23rd Psalm, which speaks so beautifully of the importance of um, creation in our lives. God, my shepherd, I Oops. don't know the thing. I'm going to need you to set that down and hold this. Ni- it's, it's on, just nice and close so okay. it can pick you up. God, my shepherd, I don't need a thing. You have bedded me down in lush meadows. You find me quiet pools to drink from. True to your word, you let me catch my breath and send me in the right direction. Even when the way goes through the death valley, I am not afraid when you walk at my side. Your true, your trusty shepherd's hook makes me feel secure. You serve me a six-course dinner right in front of my enemies. You revive my drooping head. My cup brims with blessings. Your beauty and love chase after me every day of my life. I'm back home in the house of God for the rest of my life. The word inspired by God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I am not sure. We have a kiddo, but I'm not sure we're going to have very good luck getting him. Don, Don, it's okay. It's okay. I'm going to make y'all be the kiddos um, this week, and so we don't have to drag him in here. Um, So we're going to talk um, very metaphorically today about um, sight and vision um, and understanding. So I'm going to ask if there is anybody here, because I remember what this is like. Anybody here who has had cataract surgery? Okay, so there are a few of you out there. Is anyone willing to share what it was like when you got done with the cataract surgery and you opened your eyes and things looked different? They usually, it takes a few, sometimes even a few days, but even that first opening, it can be pretty dramatic how much more light is available to you. Anybody willing to share what that was like? Oh, Camille, thank you. We're going to pass this down to Camille. It, it should be on, you just can just, yeah. It's, oh, there we go. It's actually one of the most miraculous things I have experienced because I didn't realize that I wasn't seeing all the colors. And that was the thing that was most surprising to me and most beautiful is how colorful everything was. Oh, there's a lot of metaphor right there. Oh, my gosh. Dixie. When I stepped off of outside, I could see four stoplights down. I could see the red all the way down, and I only had one eye done, two eye, the second eye, and I went down to the bottom of the, um, oh, the Grand Canyon, mm-hmm. and the reason I had them done that was so I could see the colors of the Grand Canyon. I wasn't even completely healed, but I still can see four, four stoplights, and I can see the squirrels alongside the road. <laughs> The little pleasures in life, being able to see the the, um, uh, traffic signals (laughs) and to see those little squirrels. Um, We take our vision for granted. And um, I think uh, Camille's example and Dixie's as well of, wow, it was the color that I really recognized was a complete gift I hadn't particularly expected. Like I say, today we're dealing with a story that talks about vision and blindness and seeing things fully. And I think the color is an example of, it's one thing to be able to see the black and white of the law. It's quite another to be able to see the color of life. Thank you so much for being the kids of all ages today. Let's this down 
and flip past here. Um, let's take a few moments to share the gifts that God has given to us um, with the church and with the world um, and listen to some beautiful music. When you share your gifts that God has given to you, your resources that have kept a roof over your head and food in your mouth um, and uh, perhaps have helped you to gain um, some other things in the world, when you share those things, you are co-creating with God to make the world a better place. You don't get to be God, sorry, but you get to co-create with God, God's vision of love and caring and equability of the world. May these gifts be blessed and multiplied. Amen. Okay, so... I am so grateful for people who will come and read what feels like half a book to us. It's a long one. It is a long one, but, but it's an I important one. I want you to know one. I just had my cataracts done this week. Oh my gosh, that's so fabulous. So we take the new lenses out for a long test drive. <laughs> okay, here we go. The lesson from the Christian gospel is from Please. John 9, 1 through 41. Please rise if you can. One day, Jesus and his disciples were heading down the street when they saw a man who had been blind since birth. The disciples asked, Rabbi, was this man born blind because of his own sins or because of the sins of his parents? Jesus replied, you can't blame either him or his parents for his blindness. The important thing to look for is not what caused it, but what God can do about it. The one who sent me has given us work to do, and we had better be on the job as long as, as it is still day. Nightfall will put an end to everyone's work soon enough, but as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said this, he spat on the ground, made some mud ointment from the mixture of dust and saliva, he pasted the mud over the blind man's eyes and sent him off to wash himself in the Siloam pool. The name Siloam actually means, means sent. The man went and washed, and when he came back, he could see. It certainly caused a stir. People who knew him or were used to seeing him begging for money on the streets were soon asking, what's going on here? 
Isn't this the blind man who was always begging on the street? Some were saying, it's him all right, but others thought it must be someone who just looked like him. He kept insisting that he was indeed the same man, but some took a lot of convincing and kept demanding an explanation for how he could now see. All he could do was repeat the story. Someone called Jesus spread mud on my eyes and told me to go and wash in the Siloam pool. So I went and washed, washed it off, and now I can see. Then they wanted to know where Jesus was now, but the man said, I don't know. The people then marched him off to the relevant authorities, the leaders of the devoutly religious Pharisee party. The day on which Jesus had made the mud and healed the man's blindness was a Sabbath day. So there were questions of religious law at stake. The authorities questioned the man about how he had received his sight. He told it to them straight. The man spread mud on my eyes. I washed it off, and now I can see. Some of the Pharisees were quick to express their opinion. Obviously, this man is not from God because he doesn't even stop what he's doing on the Sabbath. But others were not so sure. How could a man who was against God have the ability to do things which so clearly point to God's involvement? Since they were divided over the matter, they asked the man what he thought. It was your eyes he opened. What do you make of him? The man replied, I think he's God's messenger. Some of the religious leaders began casting doubts on whether the man who had been given his sight had really been blind in the first place. So his parents were called in for questioning. Is this your son, they were asked? Are you sure he was blind? How then is it that he can now see? His parents answered, this is certainly our son, and we know without the slightest doubt that he was born blind. But as to how come he can now see and who was responsible for opening his eyes, we are completely in the dark. Why don't you ask him? He's a grown man. He can speak for himself. His parents were playing it safe because they didn't want to get on the wrong side of the Jewish authorities. The authorities had already made up their minds that anyone who expressed the belief that Jesus was the Messiah would be stripped of their membership of the synagogue. With that threat hanging over their heads, his parents passed the question back to their son. So the authorities called in the man who had been blind and questioned him for a second time. They said to him, Swear by God to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. We know that the man who did this to you is opposed to God. He replied, I wouldn't know anything about that one way or the other. The one thing I know for sure is this. I was born blind but now I see, can see. So what did he do to you, they demanded. How did he open your eyes? He answered, I have already told you all I can about that, but you didn't want to believe me. Why do you need to hear it over and over again? Are you planning to sign up as his followers? At that, they exploded at him, saying, You are obviously following him. But we are followers of Moses. We can know for sure that God spoke to Moses, but this Jesus is a no one. We don't even know where he comes from. Well, what a bizarre situation this is, said the man. You don't know the first thing about him, and yet he gave sight to my blind eyes. Everyone knows that God doesn't team up with liars and crooks. It is only the person who worships and obeys God that God is going to take sides with. Never before in the whole history of the world has anybody heard of someone opening the eyes of a person who had been blind from birth. So surely if this man were not from God, he wouldn't be able to do such, thing, such a thing. With that, they wrote him off. You are nothing but the scum of the earth. And you always have been. How dare you talk to us like that? And they threw him out into the street. 
word reached Jesus that they had thrown the man out, so he went and found him. Do you believe in the new human? Jesus asked him. The man answered, I don't know who he is, mister, but if you will introduce me to him, I will believe in him. Jesus replied, you have seen him. You are talking to him right now. The man said, Lord, I believe in you, and fell to his knees at Jesus' feet. Jesus said, I came into the world to sort out who was who. I came so that those who have been kept in dark in the dark might see, and so that the blindness of those who claim to see might be exposed. Some members of the Pharisee party overheard this and stopped to question him. You are not suggesting that we are blind, are you? But Jesus replied, if you were blind, you would not be held guilty. But since you claim that, that the way you see things is the only way they can be seen, you've got blood all over your hands. The word of God inspired by God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Thank you for that log um, stand up. Um, it is one of our longer uh, stories in the Bible, but it is so important. Let me start with the most important thing in this sermon, in case you drift off and miss some stuff later on in the message. If you either have changed or you are working on changing to make your life more whole, more fulfilling, more healthy, more loving, God sees you. It is important for you to hear that God sees your effort because maybe the people around you don't see the new you, or at least it doesn't feel like they do. Okay, back to the scriptures. Besides all of the deep theology and metaphor, um, which invite profound learning opportunities, Today's gospel lesson is simply a great story. It contains tragedy, humor, surprises, and plot twists galore. Because this miracle story, or variations of it, appear in multiple gospels, scholars believe that it really happened. And it was clearly used as a teaching tool, not just by Jesus, but by later evangelists as well. In other words, this is a significant biblical, a significant piece of biblical material. And right at the beginning of this reading, Jesus tells us that there is a lesson to be learned from this story. It seems very important to Jesus for people to understand that God would never use pain or affliction to punish someone. In fact, Jesus flatly rejects the idea that sin is to blame for the man's blindness. Instead, his blindness is an opportunity for Christ's creative work to continue what God began. Rather than seeing the blindness as something that has gone wrong, Jesus sees it as a sign that something good, namely the creation of a whole human being, hasn't been completed yet. And Jesus does that creative work when he mixes dust and saliva and heals the man that he might be ready to be included fully into the community. This story, 
like the Jesus story as a whole doesn't stop with dismissing a primitive view of sin. It goes on to outline a new understanding of sin. And it does this by exploring what happens when the man is ready to be fully included into the community. What happens? Of course, what happens is that he is not included in the community. In fact, he ends up being expelled from the synagogue. No one wants to see the way his life has been transformed. This is exactly when Jesus, the good shepherd, goes to find this precious sheep whom others have rejected. It shouldn't surprise us. Upon returning from those 40 days of temptation in the desert, the first thing that Jesus does is to publicly proclaim in the synagogue that his mission was to open the eyes of the blind and to set free those who are held captive to darkness. The religious leaders were unhappy with Jesus on that day, and it doesn't get any better throughout Christ's ministry. In this gospel, we see what the people in power will do when folks start to have their eyes opened so that they can see the truth. Immediately, there was a vicious smear campaign. They tried to discredit the man whose eyes had been opened. He was a liar and a fake, they said. He was a sinner and knew nothing. They tried to threaten his parents in order to get them to pressure the man to renounce the prophet who had healed him. And of course, they tried to discredit Jesus as well. He was not from God, they said. He's a lawbreaker, a sinner, a deceiver. But the man born blind had his eyes opened. And when people have really seen light for themselves, it is almost impossible to get them to sit down and shut up again. The darkness is scary and the light is refreshing and beautiful and new. Life in the light is too beautiful, and it more than makes up for the hostility that new truths may provoke. A couple of weeks ago, I preached about being born again. Nicodemus showed up in the gospel lesson that Sunday. The man born blind would have made a good example for that day. In some respects, the born again experience or what John Wesley called justifying grace is at the very heart of being Christian. It is that aha moment when you realize that God really loves you. Underneath all of the stuff that the world heaps upon you, or all of the times and ways that you sabotage yourself. God loves you. But it's so hard, and the price is sometimes so high. Recently, I went to an NA meeting so I could cheer wildly as someone received their two years of sobriety chip. This person had lied to me, stole from me, and betrayed my trust when I tried to befriend them. The damage inflicted to themselves and the people around them was enormous. I watched firsthand so I knew, at least from the outside, that the journey to reclaim their life from the death grip 
of addiction has been difficult. Although a whole new life of opportunity, wholeness, health, and joy has been gained, this person also had to lose much. They had to leave friends and sometimes even family behind because those were often the people and situations that had put them in the proximity of self-destruction. The smile that night brought about by the day-to-day hard efforts of addiction recovery was a sure sign that something good, namely the creation of a whole human being, was in the works, even if it hadn't been completed quite yet. When people go on a Christian retreat, like walk to Emmaus, or to church camp, it's common to have what is um, characterized as a mountaintop experience. They have been immersed in God's grace and surrounded by loving community for several days, and their life is forever changed for the better. In both of these situations, a topic of a topic of conversation um, often comes up, sometimes on the last night of the retreat, that while your heart and mind are chock full of God's love, so full that your very being is transformed, the outside world has been chugging along the same old ways. Your friends, family, co-workers, and acquaintances will likely be completely unaware of the profound change in you, and you will likely be at a loss to put that change into words. There is a very real danger that people will not accept the new you. And if you hang around those people who inadvertently, or sometimes on purpose, have numbed you to God's love, your new life could slip back into the old ways. Why would we do something like that? because we're human, and that is often the easiest path. Because we are human and crave to be seen by the people around us, we want them to see the new person we have become by leaving the broken past behind. They may not be ready. So the only advice I have for you today for helping people around you to see the new person that you have become or are still becoming is to keep on keeping on. Live fully as that new creation. Be a beacon of light for people whose eyes are still obscured until they can see the light for themselves. But being made of dust, like the Adam, the first human, may all of us see that Jesus is ready to use dust and spit to complete the beautiful work that God has begun in us. Amen. Let's take a few moments with eyes opened or closed to um, reflect on what we've heard.
sometimes when people share um, communion for the first time, after they've had one of these eye-opening experiences, it really is like, oh, I never noticed that the bread um, is, is broken and it's going to help to heal me. I never noticed that the grape juice um, sustains me. But it is important we share that meal together and remember that like Jesus went out to find the man who had been put out of the synagogue, God is always ready to welcome us back in. God is ready to welcome us to the table no matter our age and no matter our background. God knows that the gifts that God gives are not rewards, but medicine to heal our hearts and minds and bodies. And so the table at the United Methodist Church is always open to everyone. On the night that Jesus gave himself over to death, knowing that he would suffer and die on um, the cross in a terrible way, he ate with the disciples. He thanked God for the bread and he broke it and didn't eat it himself, but shared and said, take and eat, do this in remembrance of me. And as the meal drew to a close, he took up the cup and he thanked God for the fruit of the vine within it. And then he said to the disciples, drink from this all of you. It's the cup of the new covenant. It has my whole life poured out now for you, not a single drop withheld. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts, which God gives birth to the church and offers for our eyes to be opened, we still eat broken bread and drink from the cup of salvation so that our hearts and minds and bodies may be healed. My friends, you've heard the story. The table is set and ready for you. But I would invite you to start back on that side so that you can disinfect your hands. Then come down the aisle and um, um, uh, somebody and I will greet you. <laughs> Um, David will have some uh, gluten-free crackers with him if you need some. And um, then I would invite, you could either go to the communion rail or you could go um, back to your seat using that aisle. Oh, my friends. Oops. I need to change it over to a song. Because we do have a song today. Oops, I'm going the wrong way. And there are the words for us. Come, the meal has been set. You're going to hold the cup of salvation for us? Oh, I think I should get some bread. You're good. You're right about that.
friends, let us stand as we um, are able and sing together, Open the Eyes of My Heart. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, 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 I want to see. Praises be to God. You may be seated um, as um, our helper for benediction makes their way forward. Thank you, Sarah. Now go to take the love of God into the world. We will show others the way of God's fields of grace. Now go to take grace of Jesus into the world. We will seek to bring others to the still waters of peace. Now go to take the community of the Spirit into the world. We will work to restore the lives to all whom we meet. Amen. So I want to remind you that I believe the Scouts have been hard at work um, fixing brunch for us. I invite you to stay. God's going to bless that food um, and make our bodies strong when we eat it. It's a fundraiser for our Scouts. It's the only thing they really do during the year to uh, raise funds. But the food is yummy. So please do come join us. But first... It is time for choir practice. Camille, would you come up? And um, we're going to drag everybody up here today, I think, so that they can be close enough to really hear each other. You need to grab a hymnal, please. And Camille will guide you to where you need to be standing um, and what page you need to turn to. And we will be ready to go. Come on, you guys. Come on, all you folks. Come on, come make a joyful noise. I know you can do it. Okay, here's what we're doing today. Where I'm standing right now is where I would like the sopranos and altos to be. If there's just one row, that's fine. If there's more, then you can be seated. And then if you're in the middle, I would like uh, the singers and voices. Once again, this is one row, that's great. And we're going to start with hymn number 238. Are you going to do it? So remember that the Yay. Come on. Come on. So, so what kind of voice would you like to sing with? Oh, 
Oh, then you can sing right there. That'll be good. <laughs> 